So what we're going to do is not necessarily reproduce what Euclid did, but kind of follow in the same kind of footsteps that, that he used when, when he built up what we know about geometry. So we're in section 2.5 today, and we're going to talk about reasoning and proof. And the fact that we're using logic and we're talking about doing proofs and that, that kind of thing, that's really what, what makes geometry a little different than a lot of other subjects you study in high school, a lot of other math subjects. This is what we're doing is not necessarily about um, following this step, following that step, following that step, and then getting an answer. It's more about how putting together your thinking about a problem. So that's, that makes, for some people, it makes it more interesting. For other people, it can make it a little more, a little more challenging. Um, all right, so the first things that we're going to talk about are all algebraic properties. And what, what we mean by algebraic properties, these are the properties that we use every time we solve an equation. And what we're going to do is, is the steps that we use when we solve an equation, we're going to give all those steps names. And then it, so we're, we're, we're kind of saying these are our axioms or our postulates, things that we accept as true about algebra without, without proving them. This, this, so we're giving the, the steps that we use in solving algebra equations names. So the first one is addition. property. And I'm not going to write property every time, but all of these are properties. The addition property says we can add the same thing to both sides of an equation. So if a equals b, then a plus c equals b plus c. I can add c to both sides of this equation. I can add a number to both sides of an equation. Our next property is subtraction. And I'm just going to, we can, these are all properties. I'm not going to write property every time. Well, the subtraction property tells us that we can subtract the same thing from both sides of the equation. If A equals B, then A minus C equals B minus C. You might guess our next thing is the multiplication property. Multiplication property tells us we can multiply both sides of an equation by the same thing. So if A equals B, then AC equals BC. And finally, division property. If A equals B, then we can divide both sides of the equation by the same thing. And here we just want to make sure that C is not 0. We don't want to divide by 0. So those are our those are our properties that we use to solve equations. There are a couple of others, a few others, that we use to not, sol not necessarily solve equations, but to change things around in equations. So the next one is the what we call the reflexive property. The reflexive property says that any number is equal to itself. A equals A. There's no number that's not equal to itself. We have the symmetric property. It says if A equals B, then B equals A. It doesn't matter what order I compare these things. 
And we'll use this a lot of times when we're solving equations. When we have x on the right-hand side of the equation, usually we would like to, when we solve for x, we want it to be on the left. So we'll just turn the equation around. Symmetric properties, what tells us we can turn it around? We have the transitive property. Transitive property is a little bit like the law of syllogism. If A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. So we're linking those two fir first two things together, back to front, just like with the law of syllogism. So we can bypass the middle part. And the finally, we have the distributive property. The distributive property says A times B plus C in parentheses. We can distribute that A. AB plus AC. So what we're going to do to start, and really what our, what our homework is today, is we're going to work with some algebra problems. And we'll solve them the same way that we've always done. But as we go through each step, we'll use a reason that we know we're allowed to do that step. And the reason are these properties. So what I want to do is go through an example of a, pro a problem that we know how to solve, but how, how do we go about using these properties to say, this is why I'm doing this thing? And that's what we do when we make a proof. We say, well, I'm going to do this, and here's why. All right. So I'm going to start with this drawing. So this is something we may have, uh, you may have seen in chapter one. This might have been a problem similar to something on the chapter one quiz or test. And we want to find x. And we're going to solve this problem exactly like we would have, like we always would have done. But we're going to list the reasons we're doing each step. Well, when we see it, two, two angles situated like this, what do we know about the two angles? Well, they make a straight line, so what do, they, what do they have to add up to? 180, right? So to start this problem, we would say x plus 2x minus 15 equals 180. Well, how do we know that those two angles add up to 180? What is that? Someone said something that sounded, sounded pretty good. What did we call two angles? next to each other like that that made a supplementary. they're supplementary so we could say um, that I would I would accept that as a reason what else did we call two angles that, that were situated that made a line so they're, they're it's a straight line but it's a pair of angles that make a line linear pair I would, I think either of those would be a good reason. Supplementary, linear pair, uh, straight line, that, that would work. All right, so that's our reason that we can start the problem that way. What would be our next step if we're solving for x? Yeah? OK, so when we combine like terms, I get 3x minus 15 equals 180. And our reason is combine like terms. Now, I would not say addition property here, because the addition property says we can add things to both sides of the equation. Here, we're just adding something together. So we're combining like terms. Our book likes to call it simplify. But I'm not a big fan of simplify, because a lot of times then students want to call everything simplify. So be careful when using simplify. All right, so what would be our next step if we're solving for x? Find the 
what would we do here? Add 15, right? So I'm going to say 3x equals 195. And what property tells us we can add 15 to both sides of the equation? Addition. Now in your book it would say addition property of equality. I'm fine if you just say addition. What would be our next step? Divide by 3. 195 divided by 3 is 65. And the reason we can divide both sides of the equation by 3? Division property. And we're done. So we've done the problem just like we've all, we would always do. We're just saying, well, this is what lets me do these things. These are the, the, the math properties that let me do this. And that's when what you, what you do in, if you go further in math, that's really what you do. It's not really solve problems, but you, you start with something and say, well, I can get to here, and here's why I know I can do that. All right, so questions, questions there. All right, so we have properties of equality when we're dealing with algebra equations, when we're dealing with numbers. We also have properties of congruence when we're working with shapes. So let's talk about those. So properties that we use are algebra properties when we're dealing with equations. We use congruence properties when we're dealing with shapes. So I'm going to say A, B, and C are geometric figures. And figures are just a fancy word for shapes. We just have three of these properties. The reflexive property. Reflexive properties say that shapes are congruent to themselves. So a shape is the same sh shape and size as itself. That makes sense, right? We have the symmetric property. that says if A is congruent to B, then B is congruent to A. So the symmetric property says it doesn't matter how which order we compare these things in. And we have the transitive property. And the transitive property is very similar to the transitive property when we talk about uh, algebra. If A is congruent to B and B is congruent to C, then A is congruent to C. So I can link these two together back to front and bypass the middle part. So those are our properties of a congruence. So when we start talking about geometric shapes, the, we'll, we'll, we can use a similar properties as we did for algebra. We just talk about congruent instead of talking about equal. Questions, questions here? All right, so what I want to do is go through some examples. Your homework is really going to be just looking at for the most part today, it's about algebra stuff and deciding what property the, is used to go from one step to the next. So I want to go through a couple of examples like that, and then we're going to go through our first geometry um, proof. So for these examples, I'm just going to say what property are we using? So I'm just going to write what property question mark. So we're going to have two, we're going to have a couple of steps. And we want to know what property do we use 
to get from the first step to the second step. So I'm going to start with 7x plus 3 equals 24, and then we go to 7x equals 21. So what do we do to get from here to here? Something, some, we, sub, we subtracted 3 from both sides, right? What property tells us we can subtract 3 from both sides? Subtraction, subtraction property. And if you just said subtraction, I would be fine with that. Your book would say subtraction property of equality. You don't have to go that far. But this is the subtraction property. How about B? RS equals ST and ST equals TU. So RS equals TU. First off, when we have two, two <coughs> things like this, RS ST, TU, what are we talking about? Without any symbols over, over the top, there's no segments, there's no rays, there's no lines. What is it? This property, this property is definitely the transitive property. Because we, we're linking two things together. The transitive property links two things together. I just want to remind us when we see something like this. Whoops. Uh, RS, ST, ST, TU, what are those things? This is talking about lengths of segments. So when we see two points without a segment, without a line, without a ray, something like that, that's talking about lengths. So we're, this is comparing lengths of segments here. But it de definitely, we use the transitive property. Transitive property links things together. All right, last one of these. 5x equals 10. And then in my next step, I'm going to say 10 equals 5x. I'm just comparing them in the opposite order. What, what property tells me I can do that, change the order? Symmetric property. So when I change the order, we're using the symmetric property. So a lot of your homework is something like this. You'll see two steps, and you just need to figure out, well, what changed from the first step to the second step, and what tells me I can make that change. So we're just kind of getting, getting practice what we call justifying our steps. All right, for the last bit, what I want to do is go through our first ge geometry proof. So a proof is an argument that uses deductive reasoning. So we're going to start with some fact that we know is true and link it together with other facts using, basically using the law of syllogism to come up with one conclusion. And a proof shows if we make a conjecture and we prove our conjecture using logic, a proof shows that our conjecture is true. All right, so here's our example. I'm going to start with a segment. Did you have a question, India? Uh huh. So I'm going to call this, label these points on this segment A, B, C, and D. And we're going to be given. that AC, the length of AC, equals the length of BD. So that's our fact that we're starting with. And we want to prove that AB, this segment length, is equal to CD. So let me highlight a couple of things here. Here's segment AC highlighted in red. And here's segment BD highlighted in blue. 
Well, what we see there is they overlap in this segment BC. So our idea is what I want to do is essentially subtract that BC from both of those links. So that's, that's the kind of big picture of what we're trying to do. Since each of these share that segment BC, we're going to subtract that away from each of them. So what we're usually going to do in this class, we won't always, but we, what we call a two-column proof. So I'm going to put my column of statements on the left and my column of reasons on the right. We won't always do two-column proofs, but usually. And usually you start your proof with the given information. So that's where I'm starting. And my reason for that is that's given. That's our known fact. We're starting there. All right. So what I want to do is say that segment AC is made up of two pieces. The piece that goes from A to B and the piece that goes from B to C. So I'm going to say AB plus BC equals AC. Now for this one, we have to, a reason for this one, we have to think all the way back to chapter one. This is one of the first postulates that we talked about. I'm going to do a similar thing here because we're, do, we're, do, we're doing the same thing. I'm going to say that BC plus CD equals BD. What postulate tells us that we can add two small pieces of segments together and get a bigger piece? And this really is one of the part of what's challenging uh, about geometry is things that we things that we learn in one chapter we don't leave behind when we're done with that chapter. We keep using it. So we're adding two small pieces of segments to get a bigger piece. That was our segment addition postulate. That's what tells us we can add two small pieces of segments together and get a bigger piece. And for my next step, I realized I need to back up here a little bit. I left off one property here. After division, substitution. The substitution property. And what I'm going to say for substitution property is if A equals B, we can replace A with B in an equation. Substitution property is what we use when we plug something in. We can plug 5 in for x. We can plug 2x plus 5 in for y. So substitution, plugging in. All right, now we have what we need here. Well, I look at this and I say, well, here is AC. And here is AC. I have that AC is the same as AB plus BC. So I'm going to plug that in right there. They're, they're the same thing. And here I have BD. And here I have BD. But this tells us that BD are these two things added together. I'm going to take that and plug it in right there. 
and I'm going to write that AB plus BC, when I plug that in there, equals, when I plug this in here, BC plus CD. And we just said, because I forgot to say it at first, what tells me I can plug something in for another thing? Substitution. I substituted this quantity AB plus BC in for AC here. I substituted this quantity BC plus CD in for BD here. Well now, I look at this equation, and I see that I have BC on both sides of the equation. BC is a length of a segment. And we said at first that we wanted to subtract that length of this segment away from the other two. Well, what can I do to get rid of this number that's on both sides of the equation? That's a, no, a number that's being added to both sides of the equation. How can I undo that addition? Subtract. So I'm going to subtract that length from both sides. And I get AB equals CD. And my reason for that is subtraction property. I subtracted the length of BC from both sides of the equation. And there's what I was trying to prove. In the book that we taught, taught geometry from before, they called this the overlapping segment theorem. So this is where we're going with our, our proofs. Now at first, you're not going to have to come up with something like this from scratch. What you'll do, what the, what the book does is it has a proof done, and there are some blanks you need to fill in. So you might need to fill in this blank. You might need to fill in this blank. So you're filling in some blanks in a proof that's already done. You're not creating it from scratch. Not yet, anyway. Eventually, you'll be able to, to create some proofs by, from scratch on your own. But for now, you'll, you'll be filling in blanks about a property, about a step, something like that. So this is, this is where we're going with doing proofs in geometry. And this is what makes geometry di definitely different than algebra, is it's not Step one, do this. Step two, do this. Step three, do that. Step four, you have your answer. You have to kind of think about how things fit together. That makes it a can make it a little more challenging, but also makes it a little more interesting. All right. Homework. One seventeen, five through thirteen.